Hi everyone, this is Anna, one of your consumer technology specialists at Midcontinent Public Library. Today we are going to talk about two-factor authentication. Now before I even get started with the two-factor, let me tell you what I mean by authentication. Authentication is when you are doing or providing something to verify to a particular service that you are who you say you are and that you are the person who should be given access to the account, whatever type of account it may be. So think about it like when you go to the bank, you're using an authentication process every time you want to take out money from your account. So say you're going through the drive through at the bank. To take the money out of your account, you have to fill out a form, probably a deposit slip or some other form. You have to fill that out and give your account number and personal information, but then you also probably need to provide a driver's license or another photo ID in order to get your money. So the bank uses your account information and the ID to authenticate you as the account holder. This is the same process that can be applied to your online accounts. You're actually already using an authentication process if you have any kind of online account, even just an email address, because you do need to provide your username and a password to get access to that email account. So two-factor authentication takes this process and adds another layer of authentication to it by asking you to provide an additional piece of information or an additional step in the authentication process. So that's why it's two-factor. The reason why more and more online accounts are moving to this process or providing it as an option is because it does add an additional layer of security to your online accounts. So think of it this way. The first factor is going to be your login credentials. So that's your username and your password. And then the second factor can fall into any of these three categories. They're going to be knowledge, possession, or inheritance. So knowledge is something you know. A possession is something you have. Or an inheritance is something that you are. So let's talk about what that actually means. The knowledge factor is going to be asking you for something that you should know, like a PIN number or having you answer security questions. And these security questions are going to be just like the security questions you might answer if you forgot your password. It's just that now you're using them as a step to get into your account. In some cases, the knowledge that you have may not be the type of authentication that the service wants to use. Sometimes, rather than putting in information into an app or a website, it will ask to verify your identity by using something that you should have access to or have on you like a mobile device or an email account. And this is using a possession to verify your identity. What I see the most are these one-time codes. That is a example of using a possession. So how that works is after you put in your password, the app or the website is going to say, that it needs to send you a one-time code, and it may give you the option of either an email address or a phone number. Some accounts do let you choose. Other accounts only give you one option. And then this code is automatically sent to the phone number or email address that's tied to your account. So that's how it verifies it's you. So if it's going to send the code to a phone number, it might just show you the last couple digits of the phone number. And this is so in case it's not you trying to get into your account, 
the person will not be getting more of your personal information. But those couple few digits let you know which phone or where to look for the code. So it does the same thing with email. It might be the first couple digits and the last couple digits, just enough so that you know where to look, but not giving your information out. So you will get a code, and then you can either copy and paste the code if you're accessing it on the same device, or you can type it in to the web page or app to advance and access your account. And then the last category is your inheritance category. So this means something that you are. And what I mean by that is using your face, your fingerprints, or something like that as a verification method. I know that many phones have Touch ID where it scans your finger and then unlocks your phone, or it might be a face recognition like Face ID, which is where you hold your phone up and the camera recognizes your face and then unlocks the account. I know like on a smartphone, if you have Touch ID or Face ID, then when you download certain apps, after you've put your login information and the app has verified that it's you, it will give you the option to use Face ID or Touch ID to access the account on the app in the future. And then if you say yes, in the future, rather than putting in your password, you would just use that inheritance factor of fingerprint or facial recognition to get in and access that account on the app. I do want to note that this only works on that specific device. So if you set it up on one device, it will just work for that device. If you have multiple smart devices, even if, say, they're all Apple devices, you would still need to set up that verification feature on each device. So it won't carry over from one to the other. And that's also for security reasons. So you may also hear the term multi-factor authentication sometimes. This is the same idea it would just require more than two factors. And they could be in many possible combinations of the different factors for verifying your account. And then it would grant you access. Okay, so now I am going to take us through how to turn on two-factor authentication. I'm going to do it on a Google or Gmail account today, but the steps should be pretty similar for other accounts. So if it doesn't pop up asking you to turn it on when you log into an account, you should be able to go to settings and get it turned on that way. So I'm just starting right here on my basic Google search page and I'm gonna sign in. I'm signing into the Google account and notice it took me back to Google because I'm on the Google account. I'm not signing in specifically to Gmail, although I could go there if I wanted to. But from this page, now that I'm signed in, I see my little profile icon in the top right corner. And I am just going to click on that. And here underneath my name and email address, I have this option to manage my Google account. So I'm going to click on that. And I'm looking for security or privacy. You might have to look at both tabs to find it, but I know that I'm going to go to my security tab. And when I scroll down, one of the sections is about signing in. And I do have the option to use my phone to sign in or turn on two-step verification. So that's the same thing as two-factor authentication. 
slightly different phrasing, but it means the same thing. So what I'm going to do is click here where it says off. And now I'm getting instructions on how to set up the two-step verification. So it lets us know why this is a good idea. It's an added layer of security. And then it gives me the get started button so we can get that turned on. So when I click that, First, even though I just signed in, I do have to put my password in again. This is just another way for the account to verify that I really am me and it wasn't just a fluke that somebody else was able to get signed in or maybe I opened up my web page and I was already signed in. This is just a way to do that quick verification. So I will put in her password again. And now I have to choose what device that I want to use as my second step. So in this instance, the possession category is what I'm going to be using as my second step of verification. So there are a few devices that are connected with this account, but for me, I know I'm gonna choose this first one. So I'm gonna go ahead and click continue. It looks like I can't actually click on this one. It's just telling me that that's one of my options. Now, if I didn't see my device, I could click here, don't see your device. And that gives you some steps for how to set up a device, either iPhone, it works for iPad too, and then, or an Android device, how to set that up so that you'll get the prompt on that device. So I'm gonna close that. If I didn't like these options, I can click show more options just right below the list. And I have two more options. I can do a security key or I can get a text message or voicemail with a code. So that's what we were kind of talking about before, getting a code and then putting that in to verify as a second step. So I can do either one of these. I'm going to go ahead and just hit continue without clicking either of those. So it is asking me to add a phone number. Because this is a shared account, I'm not going to use a phone number. I'm going to use another backup option. And in this case, it's giving me the option to use these sign-in codes. And it looks like they're each one-time codes that I can use when I don't have my phone with me. So it does say each can only be used once, so that is something to keep in mind. But I do have the option to print or download these codes so that I don't have to just like remember them or have them on me at all times. So I click download and I have, it looks like it created a, just a text file. So probably open, opens in notepad. So just the exact same information as is on this screen is just saved to a text document. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click next again so turn on two-step verification. The second step is going to be that prompt from my Google account or Google device. When I'm logging in, it's going to send a prompt to my iPad or one of the other devices. If that doesn't work, if I say I don't have one of those devices, that's when I would then use the backup code. It does say you might be signed out of your other devices, so to sign back in, you'll need to use the password and then the second step. So that's just something to keep in mind, but I am going to go ahead and turn it on. And now 
it looks like I do have two-step verification turned on. It lists me my available second step and those backup codes. It also is giving me the option to add different second steps, and that's what was kind of on that other options link on the previous page. Um, So we could set those up if we wanted to. And then you do have the option to select devices that you maybe you have all the time or the example this gives is if it's your own computer, you may select trust this device and then it would not make you put in that second step every time you logged in to the account on that device. Right now, there's no device listed, so none of the devices are set up that way since we just turned on the two-step verification. If there was a list, I would have the option to revoke the trusted status. I can revoke it from all, which is the link right here. If there were others, I expect that you would be able to revoke access for specific devices. So maybe you don't remember what one of the devices is. Maybe you were traveling and you signed in somewhere that wasn't really your device. And if for some reason the trust device got turned on, you would be able to kind of revoke that access. So now that we have it all set up, what I am going to do is I'm going to sign out of my account and then we'll sign back in. And just to, to be extra sure, I'm going, I'm going to close out my web browser and open it again. I'm doing this just to make sure sometimes you really need to reset for something to take effect. So I'm back in my browser I don't have anything signed in right now, but if I go up to my right, upper right corner, I do have the option to go to my account. So here I am, here's my Matilda. I am gonna once again put in my password. And now instead of taking me directly to my Google account, now I do need to check my device. So I am going to just quickly grab my other device. So now I have, I've gotten my pop-up Are you trying to sign in? It gives me what type of device and a general location. So if I'm in Independence, Missouri, and this is saying the sign-in is in France, I know that's not me. So if that were the case, I would tap no, don't allow. In this case, it is me, so I'm going to tap yes, it is me. And now, if I go back to my other device, I can see that I have been logged into my Google account. So this is where using another device, so using a possession to help you log in, like a phone or another device, tablet, you do have to have the tablet with you in order for that to work. So just to kind of see what happens if we don't have our device. I'm going to try signing in again, and we'll see if it pops up with the... Okay, because I just signed in with this browser, same browser, it knows I've already verified myself, so it didn't make me do it again. It pretty much knows this device has been authenticated, so... If it's been a while since I've used this device, it will probably make me use it again. Okay, so now I am gonna show you how to turn the multi-factor authentication back off if you do decide that you 
prefer it to be off. So we'll just go again, top right corner of our screen in Google, and we're gonna go back to manage our Google account. And we'll go back to security is where we turned it on. So we'll go back to security to turn it off. And we will have to go back down to signing in. Now we've got the on, we've got the check mark. So I will click there to turn it off. I do need to put in my password in order to verify my that I'm me. And now I do have the first thing here. It says that it's been on since November 21st, which is the day that I'm recording. And I just, at this point, have the option to turn off. So I'm going to click this blue button that says turn off. It does let me know that turning it off does remove that extra security. And I'll only need my password to sign in. So I am going to go ahead and click turn off. So this can be really helpful if you are at all worried about the security of your account. This gives you another layer of protection, but it also makes, instead of just having to have some kind of information like your password, you also need to have your other device with you. And so that can protect you from some unauthorized person or entity from getting into your account because they don't have your other device. So even if they somehow had your password and your login information, they still wouldn't be able to get into your account. And that's why two-factor or multi-factor authentication has really been gaining popularity in recent months and years. If you haven't encountered it yet, you may find yourself encountering it because a lot of accounts are, they're not waiting for you to go to your settings and decide to turn that on. They're prompting you right after you log in or right as you're logging in to get it set up. So this just gives you a little bit better idea of what multi-factor authentication is and how it works. I hope that you found this video helpful and we will see you again next time. That's it for today's video. If you liked it, make sure you let us know by following our MCPL 360 page on Facebook and our MCPL MO channel on YouTube. We premiere new videos every Wednesday and Friday at 1 p.m. And if you miss the live event, you can always find all of our videos on YouTube on one of our many technology-related playlists on our YouTube channel. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you again next time.